appreciated. So put your flippers together for Elisa Friedman! Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I have the nerdiest job in the world. As you just heard, I'm a professor of Japanese popular culture, literature, gender studies, urban studies, and related fields. Emoji is not my life's work. Wow, that would be so awesome if they were. But instead, emoji is one strand of my research that investigates the globalization of Japanese popular culture. I'm very interested in learning about what, uh, what trends teach about the societies that produce and consume them. A lot of my work, my work on emoji included, has been inspired by my students. My students at the University of Oregon, thanks for pronouncing that right, go Ducks. And my students at various universities in Japan, some of them which are here tonight, and I will embarrass them by staring them down. Um, because students are the people who are most intimately engaged with Japanese popular culture and make it their own. It's also a big secret, too, that professors learn more from students than we learn from them. And my interest in emoji comes in part because emoji is a Japanese product that has been augmented and popularized outside Japan. So what I'd like to explore with you today is what happens when you look closely at the emoji in your phone and think about them. So humor me. Take out your phones. Take out your phones. Then I'll ask you to put them away because I do not allow texting in my classroom. <laughs> Please look at the emoji keyboard under text message. And you're all turning to it so you all know what emoji are, and we'll come back to that. Can you find an emoji that you do not understand? What do you think it represents? Anyone got one? Yeah? All right, well, you can explore this all later after the talk, phones away. <laughs> Attention on the screen. That's what happens when you ask students to take out the phones. <laughs> You're just asking for trouble. So allow me one text-heavy academic-y slide, and I swear I won't do this again for the entire 20 minutes of this talk. I do have a bit of a PowerPoint addiction, though, as you can see. My idea is the globalization of emoji exemplifies the potential of Japanese popular culture to promote cultural literacy of Japan and of other cultures, and awareness of multiculturalism. Concurrently, emoji revealed discrimination and diversity within cultures. Yet emoji alone are unreadable. They need to be used with something else. And we'll talk about what that something else is. Literature, as one of the most intentional and effective uses of language, provides insight into this lesson. So cultural literacy, I'm borrowing the term from Edie Hirsch, a theorist from the 1980s, that to um, participate fully in a culture, you need to know more than just its linguistic words. You need to know its history, its belief systems, and importantly, its popular culture because popular culture is a glue that cements societies. So what are emoji? As you can see here, there is, it is a Japanese word written in kanji, emoji, literally picture characters. And emoji are just that. There are these myriad faces, foods, the bazillion flags that we have in our phones and have been pre-programmed into cell phone, smartphone units since 2011. Unique uh, emoji is based on 719 Japanese-based characters, which were added to Unicode standard in 2010. Since, two, uh, since then, they've been augmented every year. The Unicode Consortium, which is based in California, decides which emoji to add. And you could propose emoji. In fact, now we have a flat shoe for women because someone very smartly got upset, why do women have to wear heels in the emoji universe? <laughs> so you too can promote pro pro the emoji, like the skull being bludgeoned by an ax emoji, <laughs> or the toothpaste dinner emoji. So um, emoji also is a word in global languages, and I like how Amanda properly introduced them in, um, in English as emojis, because they've been officially pluralized in English as emojis since 2013. But we don't say kimonos or animes. So maybe it says something about the popularity of emoji abroad. 
Here is the Oxford English Dictionary choosing the crying with joy emoji as the best English word of 2015. How many emoji are in Unicode uh, 11 now? Any ideas how many emoji we have to add to our text messages to make sure the right emotional message is received? 15,000? I like that. 800? Boo. 2,008? Oh, what? One dollar. <laughs> 2,823 of these. The most recent update included 157 new emoji. And as I said, the Unicode Consortium pays special attention to multiculturalism. And this time they're focusing on uh, emoji that represents Chinese cell phone users or text-based users. 13 of the new emoji uh, proposed for Unicode 12 include those that represent people with physical disabilities. So when Prime Minister Abe came to the United States in April 2014, President Obama thanked him for emoji and other forms of popular culture. It's true. You could say yes. This is cultural essentialism. Abe didn't turn around and thank Obama for Marvel Comics and the Kardashians. So it says something about the view of Japan equals popular culture in the global imagination. It also reflects the reach of emoji and how popular culture can be political. Speaking of the Kardashians, <laughs> there have been 13 American celebrities that have created their own emoji set, and Kim Kardashian, importantly, has given the, us the obscene middle finger. So emoji have been used to convince people to do things, like vote in the EU referendum. People have gotten super creative with emoji. I know, isn't that impressive? World Emoji Day, be sure to celebrate next week. It's on July 17th, the date on the emoji calendar. And here is the Empire State Building, decked out in emoji yellow. I have been in Japan every year on July 17th, and I have not seen one celebration for World Emoji Day. And this is a country that loves holidays based on puns. <laughs> like, be sure to eat your eggplant on Vegetable Day. But Japan has brought in us other um, important pictograms. Like, right up there, we have the Running Man exit sign that was developed in Japan in 1979. The 1964 Olympic Committee created highly mimetic or representative pictograms because they were worried that foreigners would literally not be able to read Japanese signs. The same impulse is going on now. The Japanese government is evaluating 70 emoji to, to make sure foreigners are able to read them before the 2020 Olympics. I, did anyone follow the um, onsen, the hot springs emoji controversy? Now three people are officially being boiled to death. <laughs> to make sure that foreigners know that this is a hot springs. <laughs> so what makes emoji, uh, Unicode emoji so special? One, there's so damn many of them. And they're up to so many interpretations, misinterpretations, appropriations, misappropriations, you name it. The first emoji, if you're curious, was the heart mark, the first emoji for mainstream users, was pre-programmed into a uh, pocket bell. Pocket bell is a wonderful Japanese English word for pager. Pocket bells have been around since 1967, the, the heart emoji since 1995. I love showing the slide to my students and asking them which of these text messages is the happiest and the angriest. When you began, people began texting right in the 1990s, how do you make sure people get the right emotional message? My students look at this and they're like, oh my god, we would never send that text. <laughs> I'm like, guys, this is just an example. Or um, users of mobile technologies, text boards, internet, have created various ways to add emotions to verbal messages. Like American uh, smileys, for example, are vertical semicolon and parenthesis. Some people say the very first person to use a smiley was Abraham Lincoln. 
with a semicolon and a parenthesis, but it may have been a typo. In Japan, kaomoji, our face characters, are horizontal. So the antecedents to the emoji that we have and you just looked at in your phone were started in 1999. They were designed by Kurita Shigetaka to be programmed into Docomo uh, cell phone units. Other providers still f so followed, but these original emoji are now in the Museum of Modern Art. Here are two text messages from the early 2000s about finding a really great cake shop from two different uh, early iPhones. You notice the aesthetics are different. And you might remember the day where you sent someone an emoji or you received a message and you got like a question mark in a box because of incompatibility issues. Incompatibility has largely been solved, but the aesthetic uh, battle continues, especially between Apple and Google. My theory is that um, the, the aesthetic variations are not just cosmetic, they're marketing, they really play with our emotions. They say a lot about uh, how aesthetics affect us psychologically. I don't know, the, the big burger emoji controversy of October 2017. Should the cheese go on the top of the burger or on the bottom? Hey, the bottom makes no sense. Since 2016, there's been lots of ways to say female teacher. We'll get to that. But for example, labs like Group Lens Research out in Minnesota has been investigating the grinning face emoji and how users react to this character uh, according to different providers. Twitter looks downright surly. <laughs> or the lack of pre-programmed emoji was one thing that hurt the iPhone when the iPhone first came to Japan. And in fact, the word sumaho, the Japanese uh, word for smartphone, did not make it into popular vocabulary in Japan until two years after the iPhone release. So we have in our phones emoji that we don't understand. The aesthetics keep getting upgraded from uh, one Unicode uh, upgrade to the next. For example, these are two of the most misunderstood emoji in the world. What does this one mean? The hands raised, any guesses? High, high 10, yes, good job, you got it. How about this one? Not praying. Please or thank you. In case you're wondering, the other misunderstood emoji include the red anger lines, the sleeping face, the tired face, the female receptionist, I'll bring her up later, and the Japanese New Year's decoration. <laughs> Emoji <laughs> take on secondary meanings. As you notice, there's no clam emoji up there. Some very creative users have been using the Japanese New Year's decoration as an obscene middle finger gesture. <laughs> until Kim Kardashian solved this problem for us. Yeah, what? Emoji have also been used to measure national zeitgeist. For example, Twitter found that the most used emoji on tweets in Japan was, has been the beating heart emoji for excitement in 2016. The same year in 2016, the most used emoji on American tweets was the sad face. No comment about our presidential election. <laughs> so my students have learned a lot about Japanese culture from popular culture. So popular culture is something that's frivolous, it's fun. We're not supposed to think so deeply about it, but when we do, a whole world opens up for us. When you look closely at the original 719 emoji, for example, you can learn a lot about Japan. For example, if you're a, Japan, a woman in the Japanese workforce, according to emoji, you have a few choices. You could be a dancer, either Playboy Bunny or Flamenco, <laughs> or you could be the receptionist. Do you know what the receptionist is doing with her hand here? She's showing you the way exactly. You don't point in Japan, you palm, and you, and you, and you. Same-sex 
couples were added to emoji in 2012. Yay, same-sex families in 2015. They were banned in Russia, not because of the creepy eyes. <laughs> Skin tone emoji were added in 2015. So I wonder in my work, why does multiculturalism often precede gender acceptance? Diversity of women's work did not incur, uh, occur until 2016 with Google. And in the emoji universe, you're either male or you're female. It's a very binary world. You could also learn about Japanese aesthetics. I believe Pikachu looks like smiling poop. <laughs> Can you hear me out here? They both represent the Japanese aesthetic of kawaii, or the most manipulative cute in the world, meaning I'm so vulnerable, I'm going to make you take care of me. <laughs> they both have big eyes to show emotion, small uh, or missing facial features. Pikachu has a small nose. Poof does not have a nose for good reason. And they're both looking directly at us because we like things that look at us, like I like you guys so much. So artists have played with pictograms to show the limits of literature and language. But to date, and if you find this, please email me, I have not found any mainstream novel in any world literature written entirely in emoji. This is work by Xu Bing, I'll let you read that who plays, uh, he's an artist uh, now based in the United States who creates pictograms to represent words. Um, the, one of the first book series to use emoji was Lauren Miracle's TTYL, but it only includes, for example, heart marks. Again, this predates Unicode emoji, which started in 2010, but it's also highly dialogue driven. Something I explore in a lot of my other research, I'm very interested in the year 2005, in Japanese literature. For example, I've written a lot about the best-selling, collectively written internet novel, Denshotoko, or Train Man, which includes in the book and on the film version and television drama, a lot of ASCII art, or art made out of printable typewritten characters, or Keitai Shousetsu, cell phone novels, which are novels written with your thumbs to be serialized online for people to read on their cell phones. But even cell phone novels don't include many emoji, in part because they're 2005. But they just include heart marks and stars for emphasis, musical notes to show incoming text messages. Authors have and translators have translated fair use public domain novels into emoji, like Emoji Dick, the crowdsourced translation of Moby Dick, or the OMG Shakespeare series which does include words, or the infamous emoji Bible, that machine translated the Bible adding emoji into words. That's why we have anger inserted into the word stranger. <laughs> so I put this to the test in my class, and I made my students, they were tasked with translating two sentences of their favorite literary work into emoji. Then we, we did this twice, 2015 and 2017. Then we had emoji literature contests, where I created two sets of slides, one with the source text identified and one with the source text kept secret. And the class voted on the best overall translation and best translation style. We used this as a launching off point to discuss the merits and limits of emoji and how much emoji we actually understand, and what makes literature an art form that's different from other art forms. So the winner of the Emoji Con Best Overall Translation of 2017, this exemplified one issue of going back to this. We found as a class, writing in emoji takes a long time to write and read. That was our big lesson. Students complained this homework assignment took them forever. We also, the students avoided characters they did not understand. So this winner of the Best Overall Translation Contest 2017 exemplified the fact that we don't have enough emoji to create all the vocabulary words. For example, any guesses of what this famous anime is? Hint, the gun should be a baseball bat. What is it? 
No, I wish it were perfect timing this week. No. Go, go, go back in time a little bit. Oh, you guys. Detective Conan. Oh. I love this translation of Waga Haiwa Neko de Aru. I am a cat. That the translator literally substituted emoji for words. And the translator used the technique of repetition that we often use in our text messages. Yeah, I'll let you take a picture of this. Any guesses what this one is? Students created full panel emoji. This summarizes the plot of a very famous Japanese novel. You're getting there. Yeah. Norwegian Wood, yes. It takes place, the first chapter takes place in an airplane. It's all told from memory, and the eggplants do give it away. <laughs> this is a student's rendition of Yuki, uh, Mishima Yukio's patriotism, using Snapchat. <laughs> and the little finger. Another lesson, if you look at emoji, especially the original ones, are all facing the Japanese direction. Yeah. So if you want to say the chicken will cross the road, it looks like it's going to moonwalk backward. <laughs> Emoji are nouns and verbs. What if you want to say the green chicken will cross the road? There's no adjectives and adverbs in Emoji Universe. There's also no irony, no personification, no metaphors, or the things that make literature fun to read. How do you convey those all in Emoji? What, what's the difference between a novel, a text message, and a Chevrolet ad from 2015? So what have we learned through this 19 and 30 second romp, 19 minute and 30 second romp through the emoji universe? We learned that emoji as a Japanese product that has been augmented and popularized outside Japan teaches us a lot about the kinds of popular culture that can globalize. Emoji represents one strand of popular culture that um, can be incorporated into local contexts easily, even if we don't understand what all of them mean. Emoji also can teach us about individual societies, Japanese society and local societies, when we actually take a close look at them. And our values as a world, perhaps, what Unicode is adding to emoji. And I'd be interested to hear what's crowdsourced for next year. It also teaches us a lot about literature and it sort of, to me, it reaffirms the value of the written word in the age of digital narratives to a certain extent. Do you know what's written on the Apple book emoji? Yes. Yeah, the Think Different campaign from the 90s. So thank you very much. I got it within 20 minutes. Woo, so cool. I'm sure there are lots of questions for Elisa. I see one back here. Uh, thanks for the talk. Thank um, you. You were comparing the Pikachu to the poop emoji, but I think the poop emoji actually comes from a Japanese manga, oh. The Doctor Slump, which they have like sheets with faces. Excellent. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, actually, it's actually more rooted into Japanese culture than yeah. more like the, the You just solved toy. a big mystery for me. Yeah. I don't know what all the emoji mean. I, I have spent hours looking into my phone and thinking about this. Yeah. Thank you for explaining that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, while I walk to the next person with a question, um, you said there's no metaphor in emoji. Can you ah. explain the eggplant? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that, clearing that up. When I talk about metaphor, we have to know what a metaphor stands for, the meaning is lost on us. Just like when people were texting in the early days, there's all these sort of abbreviations that were started. Like how many people confused LOL for lots of love, especially in Japan? Or the Japanese abbreviation around 2007 of SKY, Super Kuki Yomenai, Super Clueless. <laughs> So yeah, the same thing with metaphors. We have to know what it refers to. Hopefully we all know what the eggplant and the peach mean, and I don't have to explain them. Um, 
I remember one year that the most like unused emoji was one of the sound ones, but it was like the one closest to low, so not mute and not maximum volume. Do you know what the lowest used emoji is nowadays? I, last time I checked, and I could be wrong, and again, if anyone finds anything about emoji, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear about it. The anger lines are rarely used. You know what I'm talking about? It's like a red line, a red line, a red line, like four red lines. People don't know what they mean. Also, the dash that looks like a cloud forming behind has been avoided for good reason. <laughs> so yeah, the, the mute and the different volumes. How many of you have actually used the flags? Yeah. Oh, I'm impressed. What do you use them for? What? We're, good point. World Cup season, we use the flags. How about Jordan? You have a question? Such an awesome talk. Um, quick question about the, this is based on the, the Kimoji um, series, which are duly named because they're so Kimoi. <laughs> but, um, har har, sorry. But um, I'm wondering about um, how sort of open source this is and, and how open this is to development. A lot of the examples you gave were sets from major corporations, but, you know, apps like Line have Y yes. individual developers and a lot of freedom. You have to be approved, I think, but what is the state of, of that given that this is all in Unicode? I wish I knew more. I'm a boring academic that studies this. I wish I were creative enough to design emoji because I have a few in mind. But um, if anyone knows the answer, there have been, like for example, Kimoji, there's Steph Curry, the basketball player, has an emoji set. Other celebrities, I think Justin Bieber had an emoji set for a while. They're um, for cost. You have to pay for them, and I'm not sure how compatible they are with all units. But I, I avoided line stickers in this talk. That's a whole, maybe that's the sequel talk. But there's, um, as you know, line has a lot of corporate ties, too, and a lot of corporate animated emoji. There are worlds of emoji designers and uh, different things that are being vetted. Like, if you go on, like, Unicode 8, and look at the early templates for the skin tone emoji. You can see how that process was decided, for example. And it's, it's interesting that, that and there's um, now for Unicode 11, there's been upgrades in hairstyles. And there's an, a, a really intricate design process. I'm not a designer myself, but um, I know that Unicode has taken proposals for content. I don't know if they're taking proposals, if anyone else knows, for aesthetics, but aesthetic, people have gotten more aware, thanks to, in fact, in part, the grinning face emoji, which is another most confused emoji. People thought it's grimacing instead of grinning. So especially since uh, uh, recent years, there's been a lot more attention paid to the actual smiles, to and a lot of design work. What I presented today is actually an article I'm publishing, one of the most bizarre things I've ever written using the French theorist Roland Barthes to read emoji. It's pretty academic. But it's coming out in a journal in which there is an article that explores the intricate process of emoji aesthetic vetting. And I could refer you to that. Yeah, thank you. Yes, thanks. Well, so a comment on the Unicode stuff. I don't know the Unicode committee personally, but I having been you. on oh, having been on web standard committees, the way that stuff gets decided is you show up at the on the mailing list and you argue your case for months. Yay! <laughs> and you can get anything you want done, but you have to be there. You have to <laughs> you be have to, there. You have to participate. Like you can't just awesome. like send your request and like let it go. You got to participate a lot. Yeah, speaking of which, I've been following the story, as I mentioned, of the woman who proposed the new blue ballerina flats that we now have in Unicode 11, how she was very upset that women only had this, or, or people who wanted to wear women's shoes, only had the option of the red high heel. So she kept hounding the Unicode consortium and really got her emoji pushed in part to the top. Have you tried this with any emoji? I have not tried it with emoji. But uh, I did have a question. Yes. Um, I don't know if you have any insights or thoughts or, or uh, knowledge about this, but I noticed that being an engineer, a lot of engineering sites seem to hate emoji. They'll filter them out. They won't let you post them. If you post them, people get angry. Do you know why, have any idea why that is? Uh, I think I'm the one professor at my university who encourages students to write essays in emoji. You're welcome to do that in my class this summer. Um, 
I, some people have a biased opinion against emoji that they're too juvenile, for example, or they dumb down communication. I don't know if you feel that way. Or they represent, um, I've seen debates about this. People fear that emoji sort of represents a tide of informalization occurring in world communication. That if you send out a, a very specific scientific report and end it with a smile face, it might not be taken as seriously. I don't know how you feel about that. Um, but, or some people, I, I've gotten emoji and I begin to wonder why is my 65-year-old you know, department head sending smile faces about a department meeting. So there is sort of, I think people are thinking, one, issues of propriety or time and place, and the kind of utterances in which emoji are used, or um, understandability. That's a good question. What, what brought that question to mind? Did you have any particular experience with this? or? Why? Why do they not? So someone's giving them like the Kim Kardashian middle finger now? It's not leaked. Oh, sorry, please. Uh, it has to do with databases and input sanitization. Oh, sort of like God. the whole classic Johnny Tables thing. You don't want to have a student table and a student that's been named Johnny Drop Table Students. <laughs> Good point. Bo Bobby Tables. Excuse me, Bobby Tables. Little Bobby Tables. Yeah, I'm talking to the right crowd here. If there's any engineers in the audience, I would love to co-do an emoji project with you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Anybody else? Can I ask a quick question? I, I, maybe you can explain this. I'm going to make a statement, and I hope I'm not the only one in the room that does this. Am I the only person that makes faces while I'm trying to choose emoji when I'm <laughs> typing? <laughs> Do you also bow when you're on your cell phone? I'm not that Japanese yet, but I, I, I make grimaces, and it's like, nope, not that. Oh, yeah, that one. <laughs> and how many of you tonight are going to be on the train looking through your emoji? <laughs> no, I do not do that. Maybe now I will, though, now that you mention it. <laughs> okay, last question. Why emojis are yellow? Ah, Simpson. <laughs> Good point. Or the you know the when you're not sure what in the United States if you go your friend's having a baby and you don't know what gender it's going to be, you get yellow. Um, that's a good question. There's probably a nerdy scientific reason. I could give you the cultural perspective, and please correct me if I'm wrong on that too. There, um, they started yellow in Japan. Uh, why is Pikachu yellow? Um, in part, it's a, it's a color that's eye-catching. It's a color that's very vivid. You could add it to a text and it'll stand out. It's a color, it's not representative of any direct Japanese skin tone. I don't think that's the reason at all. Um, do you have an answer to that? <laughs> I'm so glad you brought up the have a nice day face. My theory was that that had something to do with it, but I've seen reports saying no, it did not. But that face started in 1971. Do you know what you're talking about, that wonderful have a nice day? That line now incorporates into their emoji. I don't know if it's a cultural joke. But um, yeah, yellow tends to be a, a, like, you know when you watch anime, things are always color coded. Like you know the guy with the most, or the, the person of, of any gender with the most colorful hair is going to be the main character. And often the hair that's sticking up the highest. Just like the kid that's in the back of the emoji or the anime classrooms, the bad kid by the window. So there's certain codes that we, that we know, like this, by having emoji, emoji yellow, it makes them, inter, in, like now they're instantly recognizable as emoji. So I think some reasons were sort of aesthetics that they'd be pretty odd and maybe wouldn't look the same if they were blue, for example. If they were, if they were white, the, the, they wouldn't stand out in a text message. Um, I'd like to see them in, in purple, that would be nice. But, but yellow tends to be a color like Bart Simpson. I, it feeds into a lot of popular culture. Alisa, that was so fantastic. Yeah. Let's take the last one. Find out, because you mentioned uh, a number of times that uh, one of the impediments of uh, using emojis is that people don't know what they mean. Yes. Have you 
considered probably creating a dictionary of this. There's a wonderful dictionary online, Emojipedia. Oh. There is. There's a, 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 a. There's lots of. There's lots of emoji dictionaries. Creating a paper dictionary, oh, that would be so much fun, or even a digital dictionary. But there are websites that meticulously catalog them, and that's how I was able to steal a lot of these images. Two from Emojipedia is my go-to source. I don't know if, if anyone has, and that, I think that's crowdsourced. So. Yeah, Emojipedia. Cool. If uh, Elisa's going to stick around, so I'm I will sure be you here. can answer some more questions, but let's give her a big round of applause. Thank you.